It is so great catching up with my next guest, and he's got a big fight coming up here, UFC Fight Night, April 23rd, taking on a fellow Canadian of mine, uh, Charles Jordan. It's uh, Lando Venata back here on the program. Lando, how are you, sir? What's up, man? Doing good, doing good. Good stuff. Uh, just first, tell me uh, how this all came together with you fighting Charles. When did you find out, and how did it all come together? Um, I don't know, a couple months ago. Oh, wow. Okay, so plenty of notice then, which is great, getting a yeah, full camp. Yeah, they, offered me, they offered me somebody else first, but uh, that guy was unable to take the fight for some reason. Or didn't take the fight. I don't know. Anyway, they offered me somebody else, and then he he fell through. And a couple weeks later, they're like, "All right, we're working on it." And then they're like, "Charles Jordan." Like, yeah, the guy's been in the in the spotlight a bit lately. He's got a bit of a name on him now. So awesome, solid matchup. Love it. We haven't seen you since uh, May of, of last year. Um, I know you're supposed to fight. I think it was in November, and there was was there an injury? I was just uh, for people who might not know what what happened with that fight not not coming to fruition. Yeah, man, I fought like twice in two years. It's rough. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, that one I had so slew of things. So I, I fought, and then after the fight, I had an issue with my knee and an issue with my neck. My neck was super jacked up for like two months. Like I could barely move my head. Um, it was just muscle, just muscle, but it was just when I slammed them, I landed on my head first and just jacked all the muscles up. So they offered me a fight in September. I was like, I'm still injured. So I had turned it down. And then, and then I got the fight against Lutz for November. And two weeks out, two and a half weeks out, I got COVID. And that took me out the game pretty bad for a few weeks. Took me like a month, five weeks to recover from that. And then that was just sitting for a bit. And then, yeah. So injuries, COVID, more injuries. But now I'm good, 100%. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just bad luck. I mean, yeah, it happens, I guess, you know, like not, not much you can uh, prepare for when it comes to that, especially with COVID and, and everything else. Um, so we, we mentioned Jordan. That's who you're fighting. What do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him? I think style wise, this has got fight of the night written all over it. Yeah, man, I think it's uh, a great matchup with two strikers, man. He's exciting. Uh, I feel like I've watched all of his fights and I, I got his style down to a T, like everything he does. You know, I know yeah. his game, probably know his game better than he knows his game and mm -hmm. uh, super prepared. Cardio is insane. Technique feels great. Um, I'm 100% ready for this fight. Training camp. Where have you been training? Who have you mainly been working with leading into this fight? Jackson's Akima. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Akima gym down here in Albuquerque. And you know, I just got my, my normal teammates. It's a pretty small gym. We're homegrown. Um, my main guys, this dude named Steven, amateur guy, and Ray Borg. Me and Ray helping each other out for the last three years now. Awesome. Awesome. That dude's a monster and yeah. uh, awesome teammate really brings a lot to the table, helps me get better. And then my coaches, me and my coaches also scrap. You know, I got my striking coach, you know, Nick or so great uh, X fighter. Um, my grappling coach, this guy named Barata He's an IBJJF world champion and my wrestling coach, a two time all American out of Nebraska. So I got three good guys that whoop my ass on the daily. How cool is it to see Ray pick up that big win in Eagle FC? Oh, he's picked up a couple, but uh, Ricky Bandeas, a really good opponent, and he came away with the uh, decision. Oh, I'm stoked for him, man. But, dude, so I cornered him his last two fights. Mm -hmm. and this last one was so stressful. <laughs> I, I, walk, I walked back, like, wait, as soon as his name got read that he won, I was like, I fucking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be harder to watch your, your friends fight than, than you fighting sometimes. I've heard that from a lot of fighters. It's also hard when you're cornering somebody and they are in your, like right in your corner. He has him against the cage and you're yelling at him to do what he should be doing. And he's not doing it. Oh man. And when you got a guy like Ray Borg, who's so good, like Ray's a flyweight. And Ray sometimes whoops my ass. Like Ray's, he's an anomaly. He's a monster. And to see him fight that night against, um, sorry, his last opponent, uh, Ricky Ricky Bendeas, yeah, yeah, it's Bandit, yeah, good guy too. Um, mm -hmm. and he fought so far below his own level that night. Like it was to me the worst performance of his career. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, by far. And but he still won. He still won. But it's, it's one of those ones that had he fought to like his level, to his own level, it would have been an easy night. It should have been an easy night. Okay. That's frustrating. But it's cool, man. The Rays, he's, he's going to be the champ of that organization for sure. And then we'll see where he goes from there. He's still young, too. He's like 28. 
I know. That's the thing that people forget is that he, he came into the UFC very young. So, you know, this idea of, oh, is he going to get back? I mean, he's so young that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot of uh, opportunity left in his career. Um, we actually haven't spoke since you made the drop to featherweight. So this is another yep. featherweight fight, obviously. How's that going? Because uh, I was always curious about that, like you making that decision and, and how's, how's the cut going? Uh, really, I've just changed up my diet and my lifestyle. I used to walk around like 180, high 70s, low 80s. Now I walk around mid high 60s all the time so i say i'm just staying in much better shape you know looking back i used to always think i was you know, real lean when i got to lightweight and now i'm like damn i used to be not very lean <laughs> like that <laughs> was definitely at the wrong weight class so i fought my first 10 fights in the ufc up a weight class and it's good learning experience but now i'm in my my home man good it's good to hear uh your corner you mentioned uh, nick urso there i imagine he'll be in the cage with you who else is going to be making the trip so I got Nick Urso, um, Barata, Rafael Freitas. He's a IBJJF world champion. And then my, my buddy, Eric Montoya, who's a two-time All-American wrestler. There you go. And two of those guys, the jiu-jitsu guy and Nick both fought. So. Oh, cool. Oh, there you go. Um, all, all flyweight, so they all got good technique. Yeah, no, that'll help. Uh, April 23rd, how do you see this fight playing out? Dominant. Dominant, man. Like, levels. It's gonna yeah. be good. He's 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 a gamer. He don't get tired. He's uh, you know, he's tough. He's gonna bring the action. He's slinging. He's slinging leather for sure. He's ripping kicks. But there's levels. Back to you. Um, I was curious, how many more fights do you have left on your contract? I can't remember if you re-signed or not, like recently. I know because you just like you mentioned, you haven't fought that much. So I was kind of curious about that. So that last one, I think I've re-signed before that four fight deal. So I have. This one and two more. So I got three fights left. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about uh, kind of re-upping or anything like that. Um, you're always someone who's uh, always doing adventures and cool stuff, kind of like your buddy Cowboy Cerrone. Um, is there any uh, anything planned after this that you, that you got uh, on tap this year, especially with things opening up? Um, honestly, not really. Uh, all I've really been into lately is like hunting and racing. So I find out next month if I got any of my hunts whatever that okay. that in for and if i do then i'll have some adventures around that and if not i'll just be doing track days i'll just be taking the motorcycle or taking my car and uh yeah just going to the track and doing some track days with that you mentioned being at the eagle fc show one of the guys that was on that card is someone used to train with diego sanchez i know there's been a lot of stuff that's happened between uh, when you used to train with them and now but it seems like getting rid of the joshua fabia guy has sort of made diego see the light a bit did you have a chance to speak to him when you're at that event yeah man diego's cool dude you know, mm. he's just uh, he's a dude that he fights for himself and he fights for, for his daughter, he fights for the paycheck. And uh, yeah, I like Diego, man. He's, he's I'm glad he got away from the Joshua dude because that dude was a, you know, a creep for yeah, sure. Yeah, it was crazy. Well, were you worried at all? Because like it seemed like he was kind of trapped in this thing. Everyone could see it, but no one was really able to pull him out of it, especially someone like you who I know is close with him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so most people don't know, like, Diego took me to my first ever UFC fight when he fought Josh Allenberger. Oh, I didn't know that. Cool. Like, okay. It was Nebraska back yeah. in the day. Yeah, I was, I was out here for, like, two years, and he's like, hey, you want to come out on fight week for me? I was like, yeah. And I was, like, 20 years old, 19 years old, and just, like, hanging out with Diego all week on fight week. It's the first time I've ever been to a UFC event and got to corner him in a main event. Um, so, yeah, I was, I was stoked to see him get away from that guy because that, uh, that was a recipe for disaster. That would have only ended bad had it gone on. I agree. UFC Fight Night's coming up here April 23rd. Lando, thanks so much for the time, man. I think I told you, my four-year-old son is named Landon. Not named specifically after you, but I still think it's a cool name. So uh, there you go. Uh, so we share a name, bro. Yeah, exactly. There we go. It's all good, man. Uh, anyone you want to thank? Any sponsors? Any social media? I'll give you the last word. Yeah, for sure. Shout out to Jackson's Acoma, Acoma MMA. Um, shout out to my supplement sponsor, Outwork Nutrition. And shout out to my track racer sponsor, Track Racer. No C, T-R-A-K, Racer. <laughs>